Not only can you run Databricks notebooks in Azure Data Factory, now you can submit jars and Python scripts to Azure Databricks clusters using new activities in Data Factory. Gaurav Malhotra is here to tell us all about it today on Azure Friday. Hello, this is Lara Rebelke, and today on Azure Friday, I have Gaurav, who is a Senior Program Manager with Azure Data Factory, and he's going to walk through some great new updates that we have with our integration between Azure Databricks and Azure Data Factory. So what are you going to show us today? Yeah, thanks, for, Lara, for having me here. Uh, so last time when I was here, uh, we talked about that we have Databricks as a compute engine supported in uh, Data Factory, where you can use Databricks Notebook as a step in your uh, as an activity, which is a step in your pipeline. And the typical pattern looks like what you see on your screen, where you have data coming in from on-prem cloud, and you're ingesting using Data Factory into the lake. And then followed by that, you are prepping and training the data using Databricks. So last time we said that you can use the Databricks notebooks where you've authored your Python, Java, Scala code. You can use that as a step in your pipeline and then load the data into DW. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying today is that we, in addition to those capabilities, we are announcing new capabilities where not only notebooks, but you can also submit a jar. So if you have a Java code that you've compiled as a jar, you can uh, now submit a jar to a Databricks cluster. And if you had a Python script, let's say you have a Python script for retraining your model, then you can also submit a Python script to uh, the Databricks cluster. Both jar and Python are supported as first class activities in Data Factory now, which you can submit over Azure Databricks compute clusters. That's fantastic. So do you have something you'd like to show us how this how this works together? Yes, so I have a very interesting demo, but before we dive into the demo, I wanted to show you a pattern on how typically this is used. So as you see on your screen, we have data coming in from Amazon S3 to Blob, and we have some data in on-prem SQL Server, some reference data that we have that we're moving to Blob. You could have a notebook where you have written your uh, Scala code maybe to cleanse some data. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, Databricks notebook that's running that cleansing process. Once that completes on success, you could have a jar which does your classification of the data. So here in this case, I found some jar, maybe a third party jar that I want to use as part of the step in my pipeline. So I have um, M a machine learning library classification step which submits a jar to the Databricks cluster. And also on success, I'm trying to train my model, which I'm using. And here, for training my model, I have a Python script that I'm submitting to the Databricks cluster. If my classification succeeds, then I'm loading the data to the data warehouse. So let's dive deeper into how you can submit the JAR and Python scripts to yeah, your like to Databricks cluster. Great. So what I have are two examples. The first one is that I have over here a pipeline where you have a jar activity. So again, it's simple drag and drop. If you see, I have a pipeline and there is this, the way it's organized is uh, activities run on what compute. So data, these notebook, jar, and Python activity runs on Databricks. So you can just drag and drop a jar activity onto the canvas. In this case, I already have one. And uh, what, what you need to specify are the configurations. So you specify what Databricks cluster you want to run it on, which I have already selected over here. If you want to take a look at how it looks, it's a cluster that I have in the East US region. I could have an access token specified over here, or I could pull it mm -hmm. from a keyboard. I specify that it's a new job cluster that I want to use. Uh, I had the option to use an existing interactive cluster as well. And again, I specify the cluster version, the number of worker nodes. If I wanted to enable auto scaling, so minimum and maximum number of nodes that you want your Databricks cluster to spin off, it will start with the minimum and as the load increases, it will keep going up till the maximum count that you specify over here. And what type of nodes do you want in the mm -hmm. Databricks cluster? And then we have some advanced settings. If you want to pass some configuration or tags, uh, you can. As you can see in this particular case, I'm passing a custom tag, which is business group. Uh, it's a finance uh, uh, group, the value for that. So You have actually a lot of flexibility then in how you want to configure your cluster within certain parameters or ranges. And that allows you then to yes. balance the, the cost and the speed in, in which you want these jars yes, to so execute. 
we are giving full flexibility to the user in terms of configuration on what they want to select, right? Because in some cases, if you it's a test environment, you might do with a two worker node cluster. Right. But if it's a production environment, you might have 15 nodes and there you might want to enable auto scaling exactly. to start with a minimum node count and go up till the maximum node count. Right. So once you specify your Azure Databricks cluster, which is a link service in Data Factory, it's just a connection to your Databricks cluster, then you specify the settings. So here you can see that for the jar that I'm going to run, I this is the class which is the entry point for that jar. Mm -hmm. And here I'm just calculating the value of pi. So this is a example on Databricks uh, 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 documentation that you can see how they it works in terms of calculating the value of pi. It's a mathematical symbol. And uh, here you could pass certain parameters and for the jar that I'm running, it is already in the DBFS and you can see the path that I'm specifying over here. So you just mention that path and Data Factory will automatically pick it up. So if I were to just remove this and Again, all the features that we had with Data Factory in terms for you to just do a test run, as okay. right now I'm doing a test run and it's going to start an execution. At this point, it's going to spin up a job cluster and do the execution, which is going to take around about four to five minutes, uh, and this will run. Or if you are ready to uh, trigger this uh, at a schedule, you can always put a new trigger on top and say that I want to run Your it on a schedule. Yeah. ADF. Absolutely. Capabilities all yes. integrated together. Great. Yes, all of those are available. And for this one, I already did a run, so you can see that uh, uh, I'm just going to discard any changes that are there. So we have this monitoring interface, and I already did a Databricks jar pipeline run, and you can see the activity run inside that. And you can see the inputs that were passed to this, the jars, all the values mm -hmm. that are resolved for the parameters that we are calling the SparkPy class, and the outputs that were produced. So if you want to look, look at the run logs, you can look at it, and all of those standard monitoring characteristics for a particular run are available for you to look at right here. Great, and what if something goes wrong? Yes, so if something goes wrong, then we also provide you all the information in the monitoring. And I'm going to use the other example here okay. to show that, which is the Spark. Right. Like I said, that not only you can submit a jar, but you also have a Python uh, code that if you want to sp uh, submit to your Databricks cluster, you could do that. So in this case, I have a Python Spark activity. Again, the standard thing, you select your Databricks cluster, and you specify the file. So what I'm doing separately over here is that I'm constructing the file path. So I have defined two parameters, which is my folder path and file name. And these parameters get resolved to, I've put some default values, but once you run these, you can always change the values for these and do that. Okay. So let's say in this particular case, if I, uh, this is a script which again calculates the value of pi, but I'm going to, I have a buggy script over there okay. where I'm dividing it by zero, okay. right, which is an error. So if I run that and trigger this particular process on the cluster, it's going to run and uh, again, you can look at the monitoring view. As you can see, this one is progress, but I already did this run earlier as well. So you can see that once you look at the activity runs, the error information is right here. And not only that, you can essentially click that to directly go to your Databricks cluster. So that's that tight integration that you were talking about. So you're still in Azure Data Factory, but you can launch and get right into the error information that's sitting in your Azure Databricks. Yes. And you can see that right now I'm on the Azure Databricks uh, uh, UX, and you can look at the logs right here, and you can see that I divided it by zero, so yeah. it is throwing that particular error. So it's very easy for our customers to use these as a step in their pipeline mm -hmm. and then navigate to Databricks to look at the logs. And we are working to make this even tighter to even display these errors uh, inside Data Factory. Fantastic. And all of this is available today? Yes, all of this is available today. Uh, you can go to Data Factory documentation. Actually, I'm going to show you uh, right now. So all of this is available on our public documentation. And I should have opened this up uh, earlier. So it's in Azure Data Factory. If you go to our uh, uh, how-to guides, we have 
transform data, and then we have the Databricks jar activity, Great. all the documentation here. So you can here. go and walk straight through it. Yes, and you can look at the Python, and all of the examples are there for you to try it right now. That's great. That's great. These are really great updates, and I love that tight integration that you have both with Python as well as the JAR, um, in, in addition to what you, you had uh, spoken about last week, which was uh, our tight integration with the notebook. So yes. it's that, that Databricks, it's just getting better and better with the Azure yes. Data Factory. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, showing off some of the great updates, and uh, we look forward to hearing more and more. My pleasure. Azure thank Data you. Factory. And uh, once again, this is Lara Rebelke with Azure, uh, Azure Friday, and we've been learning all about Azure Data Factory and Databricks.